Up next, the Civil War comes to Rockville. Stay tuned. <laughs> Hi, I'm Gail Street, and welcome to Paths to the Present. Today we look back at events that took place in Rockville during the summer of 1863. Those were turbulent times. Three years of civil war had taken its toll on the entire country. Here in Montgomery County, residents were living in a war zone. Federal troops moved in to protect the capital city. Property was lost. Neighbors were at odds, and families torn apart. Just prior to the decisive battle at Gettysburg, Confederate General Jeb Stuart detoured through Rockville, causing quite a stir. In June of 2013, those events were reenacted as part of a day-long commemoration of Stuart's raid. The Montgomery County Historical Society was one of the event's sponsors and the home base for many of the activities. Executive Director Tom Kihas describes the day. We have uh, music provided by Washington Revels, uh, which is everything from the Federal City Brass Band to the Roustabout String Band. We also have um, Abraham Lincoln and his secretary, uh, uh, John Nicolay we were also here hoping to get some more votes in the 1864 election than he got in the 1860 election in Montgomery County. It's a beautiful day in yes. Rockville. Uh, I know, he's on his it way. was about a year ago in September, it was September, not a year ago, nine months ago, yes, that uh, my General right. McClellan came to this very spot and stayed at the Beale Dawson House. was a nest. A rare nest, a rat nest. Nest on the twig, twig on the branch, branch on the limb, limb on the tree, tree in the bog, down in the valley. We have Dr. Stone Street uh, in his surgical theater uh, and tent here. A number of these new procedures that were developed during the Civil War, transportation, a triage, three-tiered hospital system, anesthesia, pain management, and some other things are the foundations for the emergency medicine that we have today and the foundations for the battlefield care that we offer our troops around the world who are defending us in some pretty nasty places. It all started during the Civil War. Anna Marie Weems was here explaining how she escaped slavery. The, the year now is 1863. Uh, in 1855, we, we collaborated with uh, some dear friends to make sure that she made her way to safety. Yes, I escaped. Well, yes. And from that feather they made a bed. A rare bed, a rattling bed. Bed from the feather and the feather from the bird and the bird from the egg and the egg and the nest. And the crowds have been great. It's just a just constant stream of people coming in and, and, and going to all the stations and enjoying themselves. And, and I can tell the, the reenactors enjoy it too because there's a lot of interaction. Rosemary and alcohol is a good astringent. That means that it'll cut the grease. So you can use it to clean your scalp up a little bit when you can't wash your hair. You, you can rub it on your neck. It'll make you feel better. And with that man, there was a bay. A rare maid, a rat with maid. Made with the man and 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 the
signal corps men, union signal corps men here. You'd want to get their attention first. The best way to get a person's attention, of course, is to wave to them. It's motion is way more noticeable than something to take. So you wave to the person until they wave back. Once you see them come back, you stop. And you prepare to send. Now we talked about the letter A being 1-1. One, one. one down to the left and two to the right. So A, 1-1, one, one, would be transmitted like this. Two motions of the flag, dip down, left-hand side, with a brief pause before you send the next letter to indicate that it's another letter or another element coming up. And it would continue on and on until you were done with the message. I miss Claire Barton. So it's nice to meet you. <laughs> I miss the Battle of Gettysburg. I was in South Carolina. So, oh, what that was just there? so disappointing. I was helping the Army of the South as a nurse. Oh. Once you meet somebody who's wounded and they need things, you know, you just can't say no, you can't deny them, even if they are the enemy. Once they're wounded, according to Dr. Letterman, they are no longer the enemy. So that's a very important um, thing to remember. And from that seed, there came a tree. All right. Be a choo-choo train and start off real slow and speed up. Tree from the seed and the seed in the hand and the hand on the child. Child from the maid and the maid from the man and the man. Bed, bed from the feather and the feather from the bird. Bird from the egg and the egg in the nest. Nest on the twig and the twig on the branch. Branch on the limb, limb on the tree. Tree in the bark and the bark down in the getting ready for our reenactment of the events of 150 years ago here in Rockville, where Jeb Stewart is going to ride into Courthouse Square, and he's going to round up Union sympathizers, capture a Union wagon train, and, um, and march them off towards Brookville. The activities then shifted to Courthouse Square, where a crowd gathered, awaiting the Confederates' arrival. Historian Bob Plum helped set the stage with a lecture on General Jeb Stewart. 150 years ago, starting June 27th, uh, Jeb Stewart and 5,000 mounted soldiers crossed the Potomac River, just down River Road from here. Uh, they crossed in the middle of the night under some horrible conditions. The river was high because it had been raining for a number of days. Uh, when they got across the river, they took a brief break, and then they came into Rockville, and they started to uh, stir up the town a little bit. He captured about, about 400 Union sympathizers or Union officials. Uh, and he captured a number of them here in Rockville. Well, Stuart, here's a list of Union sympathizers in the area. We've already captured the last of them. The first four need to be captured up at Christ Church. Wonderful. Judge Bowie, Lawrence Dawson, Richard Williams, John Higgins, and John DeLue. The cell we've already got. Okay. Do you have any idea where any of these gentlemen are? Christ Episcopal Church. These men are at Christ Episcopal Church? Well, let's go right on over there and see if we can't find them. God bless, God bless Maryland. 150 years ago, Rockville residents were divided in their loyalties. Some enthusiastically welcomed this famous general. Others feared him. You rebels, we're gonna take some people as sympathizers of the North, we're gonna take them out. We're gonna take them and put them in prison. The events portrayed here are based on a letter that Rockville resident Dora Higgins wrote to her mother about the day her town was terrorized and her husband John was taken prisoner. I am Major General Jeb Stewart of the Confederate Army, sir. I am Benjamin Brown. I'm the rector of Christ Church. Sir, you have nothing to fear from my man or me. I would remonstrate with you not to deliver these men that you apparently have come seeking. So the problem is, is that there have been a, f a number of fine gentlemen 
Virginia gentlemen that have been unlawfully and run rightfully detained by the federal authorities back home. So my only intention, sir, is to take possession of these men. I will take them back to Virginia where they will be traded for some of our citizens that are being held unjustly. So I'm going to take your civilians and we're going to make a little parlay trade. They, 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 they've sought asylum here in this church. But so please send them out so that I don't have to send my men in to desecrate your church. Very well then, General. Please send them out. They will not be harmed. Judge Bowie? I'm Judge Bowie. Judge, you're my prisoner now, sir. You will be treated kindly and with respect. No harm will come to you as long as you give me your word of honor that you will not try to escape. I will honor your word of honor. I will not escape. Soldiers, you're going to be in the, uh, in the care of my men. You will be fine. You will, no harm will come to you. Who else is in there? I have a list of men. Lawrence, Dawson. Lawrence, come on out here. Don't make me come in and get you. I am Lawrence Dawson. Soldier, please escort Mr. Dawson. Take good care of these gentlemen. They're to be treated with respect and good care. Richard Williams. Richard, come on out here. Uh, Richard, Richard Williams. Richard, I saw you standing there. I hope you've heard the story I've told these first two men. I did. Please go with this gentleman. John Higgins. John? I'm sorry, Dora. Can I even tell him goodbye? You may, ma'am. Take care of the children. I am John Higgins. I'm ready to go. John, have you heard what I've told these previous men? I have, sir. So you will be accompanying me until we can exchange you for some of our Virginia citizens. Mr. Bailey. I'm Jonas Bailey. Jonas, I'm General Jeb Stewart. If you will give me your word that you will not try to escape, you will be treated fairly, kindly, and with respect, and be taken along until we can trade you for some of our citizens in, that have been unrightfully detained by the federal authorities. I give you my word as a gentleman. Please come with us. I think that concludes my business here, sir. Very well then, sir. I uh, appreciate your cooperation. God bless you. Thank you for the work. God be with you all you know, in these coming days, you General. Know, we're all God's children. It's a shame that we have to fight amongst ourselves, but the federal government just does not understand the right that we have as states to govern ourselves. So, good day to you, sir. Good day to you. I will remember our neighbors who gave you that list. Let me caution you that I can come back. I can roam pretty much freely at will. So if you harm my friends here, then I will be forced to harm your friends. Please, no retribution. Let's keep this gentlemanly and womanly. So tell me you promise me, ma'am. That you will, will not, not ask that you will not ask your friends for retribution or your family. You have my friends and family. Okay, I'll take you at your word, ma'am. Gentlemen, please take our guests with you. The prisoners traveled with the general and his men to Brookville, where they were released because their presence was slowing Stuart down, making him late for an important battle. He was supposed to be up in Gettysburg acting as Lee's eyes and ears. And in fact, he didn't get there until the battle was about half over. He arrived on July 2nd, battle started July 1st. Uh, Robert E. Lee was not happy with Jeb Stewart. I do hope that I get to come back and visit again someday on more peaceful terms. Some historians speculate that Stewart's detour through Rockville contributed to the Confederate loss at Gettysburg. Well, we've come to the end of another show. For comments or story ideas, send an email to paths.present at verizon.net. Let's sign off with a performance by the Washington Revels, singing at Christ Episcopal Church. I'm Gail Street. Thanks for watching. Success to the old-fashioned doctrine that men are created all free. And down with the power of the despot, wherever his stronghold may be. Wherever his stronghold.